Welcome back to News Center. Of course, we are discussing climate action in the country and, of course, globally. In studio, I'm joined by with Steve Ogutu. He's a communications and development uh, specialist. Thank you so much for making time. It's a pleasure to be here for the year. Right. Let's just start off, of course, with, um, in your uh, own you know, opinion, how would you, um, how would you like, talk about climate change? How would you define climate change? And what is the status at this particular point? Right. Um, I think before I can delve into that, please allow me to um, relay uh, my sincere condolences to, to the family and friends of uh, Professor Magoha and the people of GEM, you right. know, for his, uh, you know, service to the nation. I mean, he defined um, what public service should look like, mm -hmm. and I thought I should, I should mention that. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I think the discussion or the discourse around uh, climate change is an important one. And you understand why? Because as we speak um, globally, it is estimated that um, over 80% of the global population has been impacted in some way or in some way, you know, by the, 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 the climate change. Uh, whether it's around um, agriculture, whether it's around health, I mean, this impact is, is even impacting on our economy, right? Um, uh, GDPs of countries and even mm -hmm. uh, regions and global GDPs have been impacted, you know, and that is why there is an important focus um, to address the, the to, to address you know the, the factors that contribute to to climate change, mm -hmm. and not just address but also now there is a big conversation around how do we strengthen the adaptation of it because the impact is there. We, we, we've seen uh, erratic weather patterns. Right. We have seen, um, you know, reduction in terms of uh, agricultural production. Um, and because of that, even livelihoods and lives are being affected, you know. And so there is need, an important need to also talk about um, how do we adapt. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Before we get into those details, of course, let's talk about some of the main causes at this particular point for of climate change globally. I think largely it's about um, the, the industrialization, you know, that, that we are seeing, um, especially in countries like Europe, you know, China, the big emitters of climate change. Um, but also in Africa, there is a bit of that, you know, and it's, 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 it's something, it's, 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 it's got to do with, uh, you know, things like, you know, a tra transportation that is, uh, that is, uh, you know, that is, that, that is consuming, that is petroleum gas driven, you know, uh, leading to, to, to high carbon emissions mm -hmm. and therefore global warming issues. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that explains all, that leads also to the kind of uh, discussion that we'll be having uh, later on about the impact of right. climate change. Let's yeah. come back to the country, of course. What is your assessment of the impact of climate change in Kenya? Right, like I said, uh, in Kenya, uh, the, the impact of climate change is visible. Uh, just mm -hmm. the other day, we saw how um, in some parts of this country, um, livestock were dying, you know, and, if, if, and even people were dying because they couldn't, there wasn't rain, right? And there wasn't uh, food as a result of that. And these are areas that are ordinarily, um, you know, would receive rain, you know, mm -hmm. but there are also cases where we have extreme rainfall, you know, compared to how it used to be a while back. And, and this is because of, of course, issues around global warming that is um, impacting on the, on the weather patterns. And, and this is a reality that we have to confront um, to, as, as a country. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think the government is doing anything? And if they are, are they doing enough in terms of, you know, addressing climate change mitigation and adaptation? Um, I, think, I think the government has really tried. I mean, if you look at um, right from the Paris Agreement um, in 2015, in 2016, we ratified. We are one of the countries that actually ratified the Paris Agreement, which is a, an international legally uh, binding treaty. And after that, we came, out, came up with an ambitious plan, you know, <laughs> ambitious target to reduce carbon emissions by... 30% and then that was then revised to 32% in 2020. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, we have seen also the government coming up with uh, 
uh, ambitious plans like the Climate Change Act of 2016 that is look, providing a regulatory framework on how climate change issues can be addressed. Yeah. But beyond that, uh, the other day we saw the president really being on the forefront about tree planting, which is an important uh, way forward when it comes to addressing climate change. Um, but, but tree planting alone, uh, I don't think that's enough. We need to also see uh, the government also now diving into uh, supporting communities to, to adapt to the impact of climate change. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we have uh, thousands of people who are, whose, whose livelihoods are, are threatened right. and lives that are now um, uh, lives that are also threatened and I think it's important for the government to also focus um, on that bit. So what are the biggest obstacles uh, you know in solving climate change especially practical ones? Right I think the biggest obstacle has been in my opinion um, climate financing mm -hmm. that is a problem and I think there's a big conversation globally uh, even from the COP27 uh, to see the big emitters you know uh, you know, pay, you know, compensate, you know, and, 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 and uh, give some funds toward uh, global south countries like Kenya to be able to, to mitigate and adapt to the impact of this climate change. Could you just, uh, just deeply, you know, uh, deep down into what really climate financing is all about? So basically climate financing um, is about uh, providing re funds or resources that are designed to help uh, people, communities and people generally to, 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 to mitigate mm -hmm. climate change crisis or impact and also adapt to climate change. For instance, um, um, it could, there could be funds that are channeled toward helping farmers adopt climate smart farming and, and things like that. And these are really important steps. But something else that I needed to mention is I think that there, there has been an important stakeholder that has been missing in all this discourse right. of climate change, and that is the community. I think there are studies that have been done that indicate that if we are to attain um, sustainable climate solutions, then we also have to focus on strengthening uh, community-led actions. You know, um, right now there's a big conversation about how can we tap into Indigenous, indigenous knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. uh, from communities um, on how this challenge can be can be met boldly. Right. Yeah. As someone who's very passionate about climate uh, action, and you've just talked about a critical stakeholder being the community. Have you been involved in any kind of, you know, projects or works that, you know, is helping the communities when it comes to climate change? Yes, I've been involved in a number of uh, projects um, that I might not mention here for, for obvious reasons. Um, but um, projects that are designed to, for instance, help smallholder farmers adapt to the challenges of climate change. That is looking at how can we enhance capacity of these farmers to be able to adopt climate smart, uh, climate smart farming, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a solution towards um, uh, uh, cl the impact of climate change mm -hmm. um, on agricultural sector, which is a, an important uh, bedrock of our GDP as a country. I'm just, I think what I'm looking for is, do you, have you done like a practical um, investments in like helping people, especially in the community, is it through awareness, is it through agriculture? Yeah, it's actually multi-layered. Uh, there has been angles on, on, on capacity strengthening, on, on how do we upscale, you know, um, what communities are doing and, 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 and scaling them to a point where other people can also learn from them. But beyond that, also uh, funding some of those um, um, locally led initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, how is climate change expanding inequalities and how would you define inequalities when it comes to climate change? Yes, inequalities um, can be defined at a global scale, uh, like what we are seeing. Um, Countries like uh, like the U.S., China, and other countries in Europe um, that are big emitters, you know, yet it is countries like, uh, like that are found in Africa, like Kenya, that are bearing the the, the, the biggest um, 
uh, brunt of, of the impact of climate change, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that, and we have to spend so much resources to be able to, 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 to adapt to the impact of this climate change. Uh, those countries um, in the Western part, like I said, they committed in COP26, COP27 to provide certain funds toward to, to assist the mitigation and adaptation of efforts in the global south countries. But that is not forthcoming uh, the way it's supposed to be. And so what that means is countries like Kenya still have to struggle. And that somewhat expands inequality in terms of we have to use the little resources we have to, to generate, to, to direct to, to climate change issues, um, which is important, but which again, because we are not our contribution to, to, to global warming is very insignificant. Mm. And therefore, those big emitters should actually meet some of these costs. Um, but beyond that, locally, uh, the examples that given, you know, we are seeing communities um, that are bearing, you know, the impact of this climate change are those folks in the rural areas. Right. Areas that are ordinarily uh, described as, as, as poor areas, you know. And so when this impact hits, it hits them the most, you know. And, and that is, and that is, and that is the, the, the Is it the in terms of like drought issues or what kind of inequalities specifically? Exactly. Drought issues, you know, um, erratic weather patterns like too much rain that therefore affects uh, farming and all that. And when this happens, um, it means that if, if, if the source of livelihood of a farmer, of, of, of someone is, is farming, then it means that is neg adversely impacted, you mm -hmm. know, because then they're not able to get enough, enough, um, enough produce uh, to sell and to meet their family needs. And, and that is a crisis. Do you think that time when there was a locust invasion, especially in East Africa, anything like much was done to help the farmers? Yeah, I think we saw the government really coming out and, uh, and supporting that bit. Um, maybe much needed to have been done. And I want to believe that in, 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 we, we picked some lessons as a country and now we are much prepared when, when such uh, uh, stuff come up again in the future. First off, how would you define sustainable climate action? I think for me, sustainable climate action is basically um, ensuring that community efforts are supported. You know, community-led efforts when it comes to, to climate change solutions um, are supported. Uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the biggest challenges that we have had generally with, with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals um, has been community-led uh, approach has been missing. And last year I attended, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a global conference on SDGs that was held here in Nairobi. And someone asked a very important question, you know, we are right now, I think like seven, seven years to 2030, mm -hmm. which is a, is, a, is a time frame that is set to attain these goals. Mm -hmm. um, but in, 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 in the target set for each of these 17 um, goals, um, I mean, very few have reached, you know, 50%. Mm -hmm. um, and then what that means is we have to really invest in community-led actions. Have you seen any goal achieved yet? Any specific? No, I think we have made some progress. If we yeah. look at um, even climate change, the kind of conversation we are having, of course, there is some financing that is going into it, though not enough, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Progress has been made, but a lot of work needs to be done. Then what steps, if you could just take us slowly, what steps should be done to achieve sustainable climate change solutions? I think um, one, in my opinion, should be climate change financing. Um, look at how, do we, how can we invest in, uh, in technologies you know, um, um, that, that do not emit carbon, you know, or, or emits low carbon compared to what you have, especially in the transport sector. Mm -hmm. And the other bit, um, 
um, has got to do with really focusing on strengthening community-led actions. There need to be some financing that goes into that, you know, so that we are ab communities are able to scale uh, some of those great initiatives they have at the grassroots level. Um, beyond that, I think um, we need to really implement our NDCs as a country, mm -hmm. the nationally determined contributions. Uh, if you allow me to talk a bit about these, basically these are um, commitments that every country um, agrees to make aligned to the Paris Agreement mm -hmm. of, of 2015. And therefore, as a country, like I said, our, 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 our target is by, 20, by 2030, we should be able to reduce uh, uh, carbon emissions by, by 32%. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to be really, uh, to, be, to implement our national uh, climate change strategies uh, to be able to, to, to mitigate these, these issues. If I was to challenge you and ask if you were sitting at any global stage when it comes to climate change and solutions, you've been talking a lot about community-led uh, development. What would you do specifically for people in grassroots level? Well, what, what I would do is, and this has been an important missing gap, is finance them finance communities. There has been this notion that um, communities do not know what they want. They don't have solutions to challenges they face. Yeah, the reality is these are the people who, who really understand where the problem is. And you'll be surprised if you go there to seek knowledge, to seek their opinion about how can we address some of these challenges. You, you will be surprised that they'll be providing very unique uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. And so in my opinion, I think that has, that has to be a place where funding needs to go. Mm -hmm. And it's a conversation that we are really advocating um, at a local and global level to ensure that community-led community, clim uh, community climate actions uh, are supported. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how would you give out the financing? Would you like start a project and start, like say women and youth would be focusing on this when it comes to climate and men, how would you specifically deal with it's that? It's basically looking at, going to the communities and looking at what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if, 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 if um, there is some area that requires some capacity strengthening, then we provide some little capacity strengthening. Um, and then provide some resources to be able to help them scale up those solutions. I mm -hmm. think that is really important. And now that we have the county government, I think um, more funds need to go to the county governments so that they are able to, to help uh, coordinate uh, climate change uh, uh, solutions at their level. Right. Maybe your final thoughts then. My final thought would be, you know, the, the, the impact of climate change right now is, is visible and therefore we need to act now. If we do not act now, we might have to really um, uh, struggle with the impact of climate change uh, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I think the government um, has to continue on the path that it's taken, but also more importantly focus on uh, financing uh, climate change solutions, um, not just at... Uh, the, the upper level, but also at the grassroots level, mm -hmm. because that is where sustainable climate uh, solutions are. Right. Thank you so much. That is Steve Ogutu. He's a communications and development specialist. We were just having a conversation on a climate action in the country and, of course, globally. And that's it for News Center. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Fatiha Mohamed Noor. Have a lovely morning ahead.